Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is where you are, and welcome back to another episode on the Annoy Dad channel. As things currently stand right now, as I am recording this, I am stuck in that terrible limbo of no man's land, that little bit of time between Christmas and New Year that everybody thought each and every single year, well, this is a bit odd and a bit different, but unfortunately this year we have been stuck in that limbo since about March time. So anyway, today's video is going to be quite super simple. We are going to do a review of 2020. We are going to see what has happened in 2020 and we are then going to look forward in our mystical crystal ball and see what our plans are for 2021. There are a few things we can say for certain that we hope to be doing and there's lots of other things that we can say well we would like to do this and we would like to do that but we're not quite sure yet and we will wait and see what actually happens. So research for this video I went back and I looked at the video I done back at the start of 2020. And in that video, I turned around and I said, look, I've got some notes. I've actually made some notes for once for a video. And again, look, I've made some notes for this video. Woohoo! aren't we lucky? So uh, yeah, let's walk you around this way. Let's go around this way. It skews all the rubbish, it's all still stacked up. So this year I have released 78 videos, excluding this one. So if you want to count this one, you'll be saying 79 videos. There have been approximately 18,000 hours people have wasted watching my videos. Do I say wasted? No, no. People have educated themselves whilst watching my videos. And we have had 239,000 individual views. Now I know that might sound a bit low, especially when you compare it to people like, um, I don't know, Linus Tech Tips or maybe even Colin Furs, another crazy Englishman. If you compare it to him where he does that in an hour but I think for me that's quite good and the best videos were actually the ones about hatching the eggs we brought from the supermarket hello if you joined us after watching those um, we are going to be doing that again this year but we're going to twist it and we're going to do something big and uh, yeah that's going to be pretty wicked so I'm just walking around here this is orchard two as we call it and you can see I've actually been in and I've started pruning I'm just getting attacked by a bit of fence behind me actually there's a bit of fence and it's attacking me um, you can see I've started pruning and I'm sure that there are some people out there watching this who are going to go, oh, you've done that wrong. You cut too much off of that one, not enough of that one. Should have cut that bit longer, cut that bit shorter. Done this, done that, done the mouse. I don't care. You can see, lay down here on the floor, that piece there on top, whoo, just goes all the way up and up and up, up. That's about 12 foot long. And it come off of one of these apple trees and the light was blocked out that much in here that they were just growing straight upwards to try to get to the light. So I've come along and I've just started to trim them down. Let's go in there, let's go in and have a look. And we, we will carry on with the review, don't worry about that. But you know these apple trees, I've been itching to get in here and just to start doing them. So we've got these two here. We've got a big pile of twigs there. And if we come around here, we've got another big pile. See, look at it, it's huge, great stuff. But where these trees at the top, once they get the leaves on, they kind of block out a lot of the light. And then we've got two massive cherries there that also block out even more light. So they're going. And this here is just gonna be trimmed back as well. So yeah, we've got that to do. So right, let's move on swiftly, moving on. So January, 2020, what happened? Not very much. I think I released two videos in January, 2020. And that was about it. Ah, I've got a reason to be heading this way now. Uh, February is when we started the supermarket eggs. Uh, the eggs we brought from Sainsbury's and we incubated them and they hatched out. And we had Jay and we had Sainsbury. And then later on in the year, they got taken by the fox, which was a bit of a horrible thing to happen. In March, we done a video on the 110 pound coop, which at that time, cost 110 pounds. See in here, I haven't even started really yet. I've done a few little bits and pieces, but still got lots more to do. So it cost 110 pounds, and there it is there. It's still going strong. Unfortunately, in March is when um, lockdown started. Actually, I've just spotted there's a bulge in the roof there. Where it's expanding so much, because of the rain and that, you can see the roof is bulging. The poo is from the turkeys. The turkeys used to come and sit up here and just poo. So, um, yeah, but otherwise it's not doing too bad. It's holding up well. 
it went from 110 pounds pretty much overnight it was about 300 and something and the reason being is because it's like everything with the poultry during lockdown the prices just went up and up and up and up and up other than the feed of course that went up a little bit but not massively uh, in March we also started the egg to bird series that was the where we went all the way through and that covered most of the year where we hatched out the eggs we explained about how you hatched them all the way through to the birds getting older to splitting them up into those that were going off as layers and those that were going off as freezer birds uh, we've eaten some they're very tasty and others are still left in my freezer uh, April we were hatching 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 uh, that was pretty much the time where we started to slow down our hatching a little bit as well and we had a couple of fox attacks as well in April this was all back up at our old place we didn't even know this place existed all the birds are still locked in because of uh, avian influenza turkeys made it through Christmas uh, their cage just about made it through Christmas um, so yeah we had some of the fox attacks and we were hatching and then in May we got the bees and we've still got the bees the bees are currently up at the old place but I've got some of the hives down here at the minute but they're empty hives at the minute um, so getting the bees was also the time we were offered the land and our land here you see it's stretching for miles well no it stretches just over there and just over there and in a few other different places see all the geese made it through Christmas you weren't eaten were you Dave nope he wasn't eaten lucky nor was Georgie they made it through and uh, they will very very shortly be split up into breeding breeding stock and ready to go so yeah uh, where was I May we got the bees and we got the bees and we were quite happy with the bees and they offered me the land and there was a bit of back and forth back and forth and then we reached June and we were still going backwards and forwards and waiting for searches and results and I didn't really want to do anything up at the old place because I knew we were coming here or we were hoping to come here so you can see just over there there's the beehives so I am walking this way with purpose don't worry about it I have got I've got something else I want to show you um, so yeah we got the bees and June carried on and then July mid-July finally we was able to move on to here and we was very happy uh, August we started to move over the animals and we had another couple of fox attacks which is now why the fence is so on and it's on all the time it's very good actually works out really really well um, September we started doing the fencing I hope you like the view of my grass so as we walk along I'm just showing you my grass my little patch of England um, yep September we started doing the fencing and getting bits and pieces done with that we've still got a hell of a lot more fencing to do next year October was cider season and apples I'm not entirely sure on the cider um, I'm not a drinker I don't know if I've ever said that in the past I don't drink I, well I, I say I don't drink I drink so rare that um, if you ever see me drinking it's a very you're you're a very very lucky person I had one glass at Christmas what two years ago and I had a glass of Christmas before that and that's about it basically so I tried my cider and I'm not sure if it's my cider that made me ill or the or the fact I've gone so long without having alcohol that made me ill but either way after I had my cider I was ill um, um, I did try it again with mead and after I had mead I was ill uh, I do have a food allergy an intolerance um, so there is a chance that the yeast I used activated that but we don't quite know and I've given stuff to other people and they haven't turned around and said that they're ill but anyway I'm waffling that was November nope that was October sorry apples and that and that did stretch into November we still had apples we still got apples now actually from our trees uh, November lockdown diary we started that every single day of England's second lockdown uh, there might be a third lockdown at this rate the way our things are going um, but we will wait and see and um, yeah we'll just have to keep our eyes open if there is a third national lockdown then we'll see um, I've got work booked in for most of January so I'm hoping that there isn't and then December you know today the birds go into lockdown in December that's when that started 
So just before we get onto our plans for the future, and I have walked you down here for a purpose, and there is a reason and the purpose behind it, but uh, we will come on to that in just a second. I just thought it'd be interesting to see that um, I do a spreadsheet of what we're hatching. And this year we hatched out 18 lots of chickens. So that means where I would have brought like a pack of six, that would have classed as one lot. Uh, or if I brought 12 of an egg, that would have also classed as one lot. So there was 18 different lots for the chickens, which is not very many, but that equated to us having 58 chicks. Now, bear in mind that stretches throughout the whole year and it includes eggs that we've brought from eBay and other places like that where the hatch rates aren't exactly brilliant. Uh, we hatched out three lots of ducks and that equated to us having 12 ducks, which are now running around up there. Uh, we put in six lots of the goose eggs, um, which left us with five little goslings. Now, bear in mind that where I say the six lots, we did have an issue with the seagulls at our last place and they were taking the goose eggs. So where I might find a goose egg on a Monday, I might then find Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays have been already grabbed by the seagulls and then I might grab one on the Friday. But rather than waiting, I was just whacking them straight into the incubator and getting them done that way. So uh, yeah, six lots of geese. Hopefully this year it's gonna be a hell of a lot more. Four lots of turkeys, which led to five little turkeys. Two lots of quails, which led to 13 quails. And one lot of guinea fowl, which led to five guinea fowl um, keats, uh, which were nicked. Somebody decided to come down and help themselves to them down here, which wasn't very good. And we're not very pleased about that. So as I said, planning for the future, you can see after we've done that review, there's a lot that we can be doing around here and a lot that can be done. And we've got 2021 now to start working through it. They say you never know a piece of land until you've been through it for three seasons. Now we haven't even done half a season yet. Uh, we're coming up to six months, but we're not quite at the six month stage. And the reason why they say the three seasons is you go all the way through it, um, three years, sorry. You go all the way through it three times and you learn where the wet pit where the wet bit is, where the dry bit is, which bit has got good soil, which bit has got bad soil, which bit grows back quickly, which bit grows back slowly, and you learn all of that off your land. But we have got so much land here, we've got to start to think about ideas for 2021 and going forward from there. So next year, we are gonna be hatching out so much. That is the plan. Uh, fingers crossed we're gonna have the brooder up here as well, powered by the solar batteries. We are aiming to sell our birds as meat birds and also as the pet birds. So if you've never learned about um, the meat birds, uh, the laws, the rules around that here in England, we will be covering that and we'll be doing other things as well. One of the things I did the other day was I went out and I brought some holly. Now these are just common holly bushes and I've basically planted them down here in this area. Uh, one, because it's going to give me a bit of covering between us here in the field and the people who come around the road there. It's going to act as a bit of a fence. Um, it will stop people being able to look straight in as they drive their cars along, uh, which is what's happening at the moment. Number two, it's holly. Holly has got a value to it. And whilst we might not get anything out of them for the first two years, going into year three, four, five, hopefully if we keep them trimmed, if we do everything right, we should have a lot of holly with berries on it that we will also then be able to gain up and use. The other thing we're going to do is we are going to put in two strips down in this bottom bit, just down here somewhere. Um, yeah, about there, we, we go all the way along. It's about there, about halfway up, sort of like thing. Because we've got so much grass here, it doesn't matter how many birds we bring in, they're never gonna eat all of this. So we're gonna do two, two strips and we've got some um, pretty funky pumpkins on order. As strange as it might sound, but they are ones which apparently enjoy being under the full sun, which is what you get here when it isn't cloudy. Uh, this is a southern facing area. If you see 
Yeah, you can't see. Let me see if I can zoom you in. This is going to go into really, really bad qualities. Just hang on a second. If I zoom you in, all right, you can't quite see it. Where the chimneys are there, I've got you zoomed in so far. There's a slight little light difference at the top of the chimneys between sky and sea. That is actually sea behind it, and that's the sea. So we are um, right on the southern tip of England in a southern facing field and we've got some crops that like to be under full sun and sandy soil. Um, the soil is a mix of like a sandy clay thing and just underneath that you immediately go into the sandstone as we learned when we dug the well which is also something that's going to be coming up in 2020 because I've got a working hand pump thingy on it at the minute but um, it isn't quite done so I'm not happy to release the video just yet of that. So that is going to be done this year, hopefully, fingers crossed, all being well. So we'll have holly, we'll have pumpkins. The other thing I've done is there's another YouTuber who I watch, who is Mr. Chili Chump, and he done a chili chump seed pack. And it's just like a, um, it's just like a seed pack of chilies. So we are going to try to grow them down here. So yes, whilst we are going to do the birds, and the birds are going to be the main aspect, going forward still because we've got the space we've got the room we've got to try other things just to be able to try to bring in a little bit of money oh i'm gonna cough hang on a second <coughs> oh excuse me don't worry it's not coronavirus it's just where i've been, just been talking non-stop for the past quarter of an hour yeah you've been listening that long crikey i thought my life was boring oh dear um so yeah anyway so we, we are going to be trying these different things the farm has to pay for itself now the last time i said the farm has to pay for itself somebody asked me what do you mean by the farm has to pay for itself well there are costs which we have to pay for like the feed we have to pay for the water we have to pay for the upkeep of the fencing and a lot of the fencing around here needs changing as you would have seen from the daily lockdown videos we have to pay for people to come in to trim the trees so all the trees you're able to see there in the hedge line they all need cutting down uh, we've had the ones done by the power company but the other ones with the recent storms, I've had trees blowing into the road, which is never good. And we need to sort it out. So that all needs to, that all needs to be paid for. Whilst I could pay for it all out of my own pocket, I would much rather that the land earn the money, because it's got the option to, to earn the money, to be able to cover the costs of everything else like that. We've also got to pay for the maintenance of the tractors, we might want to bring in some new birds and all of those sort of things. Plus next year, I do want to get around the country a bit. I want to go to some of the auctions. This year we plan to do the Mountain Mowbray uh, graded rare breeds auction. Uh, that was just after the COVID lockdown and it was cancelled. I think that was April time that one was planned for and I plan to do that. So I want to do some others this year to get out there, get out and about see these places, get to different auctions, speak to other keepers, you know, maybe even actually get to meet some of you guys out there who watch my videos week in, week out, and who leave me all of the comments and stuff and tell me what you're up to. Um, you know, if I'm able to turn up at a few of these events and actually speak to you guys and say, hello, yeah, this is what I look like, because I could walk in there and I could be like undercover. You know, if I walked in, oh, hey, yeah, my name is Jean-Luc. Oh, uh, Jean-Luc annoyed that. Yes, yes, I am French. See, nobody would know who I was. And they'd be like, my God, who is he? Um, but yeah, uh, we could do that. But um, yeah, that is one of the things I plan to do for 2021. And we just have to turn this place into a little gold mine and just get the money coming in and in and in. Now, if you can spot, the geese for the past few weeks haven't been my friends. They walk away from me, they run away from me. Uh, we've got two of the new ones down there at the minute. And uh, the larger ones, the darker ones in the middle, um, they're old geese. But they're no longer my friends, so they're walking away from me. They don't want to come to me, they want to run away from me. Which means they're getting to the start of the breeding season. As soon as the breeding season's over, they'll start coming to me because they want to see me for food. So we need to get those guys split up pretty quickly and um, get them ready for breeding because they should start to lay in the next six to eight weeks or so, I would have thought. I would hope, anyway. 
So anyway, I have waffled on for 20 minutes so far. And I think I've done a good review with last year and we're ready to go for next year. So uh, let's get on with it. If you've got any ideas of anything you think I ought to be doing, I could be doing, I should be doing, then please do leave it down in the description below and I will do my very best. I do get asked quite often, do you have this breed? Do you have that breed? Will you get this? Will you get that? And all of those sort of things. And I'm trying to work with the breeds I've got now. And then once we've worked with those, then we are going to start to look at expanding into different breeds and doing other things with them and seeing what is possible. But yes, we do most definitely plan to raise more meat birds next year. So thank you ever so much for watching. If you have not already done so, please do hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, leave me a comment, and until next video, bye-bye.